It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. It's a happy new year. Yes. <laughs> Even though we're already in a new month, but it's still a happy new year for yeah. me to you. Yes, good to see you again. Thank you. Looking at the peculiarity of um, your union, how would you respond um, to the issue of inflation, which has quadrupled in the last few months? What do you think needs to be done differently? Uh, well, right now, I think the first thing that we will tie inflation to today is the value of the Naira. Because you'll find out that every day the Naira keeps depreciating. And uh, we've even gone beyond weekly price movements or daily price movements to hourly price movements. Uh, I've seen people who have gotten prices in the morning and by afternoon, those prices have changed. So right now, focus should be on how the Naira can be stabilized. And in stabilizing the Naira itself, it means that we have to look at those things that are eating into our foreign exchange reserves outside the, uh, the CBN trying to meet up with its obligations um, across board, across the various industries. Uh, we need to reduce our dependence on importation. We've said this several times and continue to look inward at local things and see how we can um, rely more on our local products um, outside the uh, uh, imported things. And then also try and curb expenses, local expenses to start with, and then expenses that eat deep into our foreign reserves. Okay, moving forward, um, talking about the welfare of workers in the country, uh, we are very much aware of an incident that happened about a month ago where a banker actually committed suicide and um, wrote a letter and expressed how depressed she was. Um, how did your union respond to this and uh, what would be your advice to employers of labor going forward towards ensuring that decent work is promoted in the workplace? Yeah, that, that was quite a sad incident. Uh, it clearly showed that a lot has to be done in terms of mental health. Now, as a union, I'll even go beyond how we reacted to it. Uh, we, as ASBFI, have a record as the only union today that commemorates the World Day for Decent Work. And it's because of things like this where we're able to come together to share ideas, to rub minds together on the things that affect mental health that would lead to things like suicide, like mm -hmm. the case uh, of what um, happened here. And um, indeed, it formed part of the UNIQ Global Conference that took place in August in Philadelphia, where we uh, made presentations on decent work. Um, within the industry, there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. uh, in terms of delivering value at the workplace. But Every organization owes its staff the responsibility to provide support because sometimes the mental health may not be totally related to the workplace environment or to things that the person is facing personally in other areas. But when you join that together with work-related activities, then it escalates. And organizations have that responsibility to ensure that they're able to support their staff through counseling, through observation, because sometimes people hide um, these things within themselves, but an organization that observes the body language of its staff will have noticed that there is a problem uh, coming up which needs to be needed in the board. And once they're able to do that, once they're able to respect the right of workers in terms of the decency of the environment they work in, and that when we say that we're talking in terms of um, work hours, the right of the worker to to disconnect the relationship between um, staff and members and their supervisors, because sometimes it could just be um, uh, sometimes not physical harassment, but mental harassment. You know, the way we talk, the way we react, and the way we relate to um, our members. Those are the things that need to be caught and uh, quickly addressed. And if we have that kind of thing, then such incidents like the sad one that happened 
will, will be minimized, if not completely eliminated. During the week, the federal government of Nigeria inaugurated um, a committee to address the issue of um, setting up a figure for, that would be the new national minimum wage. How would you react to this committee or to this development? And um, is Asbifi also part of um, this committee owing to the fact that it's a financial institution and also has um, <coughs> lots of um, role that they can play in this development? Yes. Um, well, this was something that we saw coming based on the various discussions that had started since last year. Um, when the issue of minimum wage came up, you know, there had been quite a number of industrial actions by the labor unions um, in Nigeria. Uh, so the setting up of the committee was actually a welcome development and the inauguration, like you said. However, uh, to answer one of your questions, no, as if is not part of the committee. Uh, well, one would have expected that the financial sector uh, on the labor side would have been represented to be able to um, add value in the discussion, in the negotiation itself. But another thing that we may have observed is that uh, since this negotiation, uh, this negotiation started, a lot of it has been skewed towards the public sector more than the private sector. So basically, you will find out that it is what is negotiated for the public sector is what the private sector now picks up and works. And uh, I think we need to start correcting those things and look at it across board. Because while the government is able to set figures and limits based on their budget, organizations have to work based on their own income on their own profitability to be able to fix these things as well. And you, you, I mean, you need to understand that we all patronize the same markets. We all go in the same public transport. We all live in the same kind of houses. So there is no disparity in any form. And at the end of the day, everybody is affected by it. Uh, for us, the advice we can give, even though we are not there, is that in coming to the minimum wage, the government has to ensure that um, outside a figure being put in place, the wage is sustainable until the next negotiation, not a situation where six months down the line it's, it's eroded. And in being able to establish, in, in being able to do that as a government, it goes beyond money. It goes, be, it goes beyond money. It includes um, other things, other, other um, amenities or facilities that are provided for the general public to ensure that they are able to be sustained with what they earn. And then going into the public sector as well, the government needs to look at how they are taxing and uh, dealing with those organizations because whatever it is that happens still comes back mm -hmm. to the worker who is getting the wage. So look at the manufacturing industry, for example. If they do not have the kind of support that they require to be able to operate, it simply means that their prices will go up, especially with the minimum, because they also have to pay their workers. And if that goes up, it erodes into the um, wage that is being given, that is being negotiated. If our currency is not stable, it has its own impact as well. Because one of the fallouts of um, the, agitation, the agitation for the minimum wage was the removal of subsidies, was the devaluation of the Naira that had reduced drastically the value of the 30,000 Naira minimum wage that we currently operate right now. So if all these things are not put in place, amongst other things, it simply means that it's going to be um, an exercise in futility which we need to avoid now to avoid, uh, we need to avoid that to prevent any further agitations uh, before the year runs out. As an experienced financial person, um, what do you think needs to be done to strengthen the Naira? Uh, well, to start with, we need to reduce our dependence on the dollar. The dollar being, that when, when I say the dollar, I'm just using the dollar as the um, recognized uh, uh, means of foreign exchange across board. 
we need to really, really reduce our dependence. Uh, we are still an import dependent nation. Uh, if you look at the balance of trade, there's more going out than, than, than what is coming in right now. So we need to look at those things that are eating deep into our foreign exchange, our foreign reserves, and see how we can build up our reserves. And then, of course, uh, we know we are faced with the government being able, uh, trying to clear up its obligations. I read in the news recently that they had actually cleared up a percentage. The CBN came out with a statement that a percentage of obligations had been met. But it's a very, very small percentage. I think it's, uh, it was less than 10%. So we'll still have over 90% to go. Now, while those are being cleared, we should avoid building up more of those things. And it starts from the top down to the bottom. What are those things that we travel out of the country for? What are those things that we keep importing that we can avoid? Uh, we can avoid clearly uh, tourism, uh, goods and services that can be provided locally. Those things need to be medicals. Those things need to be curbed. But while you are curbing, you must also ensure. And when I say you, I mean well Nigerians generally, not just the government. Everybody has to ensure that you get the minimum quality that is required for you to stay back. Because sometimes you will find out that uh, some of these things may be justified. But if we provide the kind of quality that is required, then why not? We stay behind and we handle all those things. And then beyond that, we also need to curb our spendings. Uh, spending at the government level and spending at individual level. What are the things that are actually necessary for us to spend money on? What are the things that we can actually do away with or do without? And once we're able to get all those things right, remove um, exorbitant things, uh, ostentatious living and all those things, then we'll begin to see our currency stabilizing. So it's not just about going to the street wanting to buy dollar or wanting to sell dollar, no. It's the entirety of the way we operate in the country. So how is Asbifi responding to the bank and to the recapitalization that is happening in the banking sector generally? And how would this affect your members? Yeah. Well, the recapitalization is clearly inevitable. Uh, when we look at it, that uh, I think the last recapitalization was uh, about 2005, uh, when the 25 billion era minimum capital was was uh, put in place. Now, if you look at that in dollar terms, you will find out that that value is heavily eroded. Confidence needs to be put in the financial sector, just like the CBN governor noted. But well, we issued a statement and we communicated that to the CBN as well, that while we are not opposed to the recapitalization, the recapitalization should only happen at a time when the nation is stabilized financially. Because yet again, we come back to the issue of the value of the Naira. It keeps devaluing every day. So if you fix a value today as the recapitalization and you have not controlled the value of the Naira. It simply means that in the shortest period of time, that, to, that capitalization that took place would have probably come down to almost nothing again, just as it is right now. So we expect that that will happen first. Uh, so far, the CBN has not made any announcement yet. We're waiting, but we expect that they're also thinking the way we are thinking as well. And I'm also aware that a lot of um, banks in the financial sector are currently preparing to start beefing up, even without a figure, at least to get them closer to what is expected of them. Because we see a lot of announcements and we're seeing a lot of activity on the stock market as well in preparation for that as well. Uh, for us as a union, uh, we know that Recapitalization will probably lead to mergers and acquisitions. And we've also made that note out, we've, we've, we've made that call that the unions need to be taken along, carried along in the entire process. They need to be recognized. And the rights of our members need to be protected as well. 
in such a way that recapitalization will not lead to job losses. Because if we have mergers and acquisitions, it means we are going to have duplication of roles. Mm -hmm. But we also expect that in that kind of situation, businesses will expand. So what we expect is that our members will be prepared for new roles, for new departments, for new positions. And for us as a union, we continue to encourage our members to develop themselves in preparation for all these things. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Jason. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.